soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force. You are about to embark upon a great crusade towards which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. Hopes, and prayers, and liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. Hi, I'm Dennis Weiss for Eagle Communications. I'm here with Major O'Donnell, who comes from the Big Red One, and you're here at the Eisenhower Presidential Library because in just a little while, you're going to do a very special thing here. Tell me about it. That's correct. I'm, I'm actually going to be uh, portraying uh, General Eisenhower, and I will be reading the Order of the Day, um, uh, which basically he read to all the soldiers uh, via radio, and then uh, had uh, the soldiers were provided a, a handwritten copy uh, before they, uh, they landed on the beaches on D-Day. And doing that at the Remembrance Ceremony at Friday morning, right? That's correct. That's very special. You're a lucky guy. It is uh, e extremely special. It, it means a lot to me. Uh, General Eisenhower has, uh, although although not uh, not born or raised in Pennsylvania, he comes from uh, Pennsylvania Dutch ancestry. Mm -hmm. uh, I myself was born and raised in Pennsylvania, so there's sort of a linkage there. Uh, also had the unique opportunity to serve as a member of uh, of NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, in both combat and in peacetime. Uh, and obviously, he was you know then uh, uh, he was. Sakir, the Supreme Allied Commander mm -hmm. uh, of, of that organization. Mm -hmm. So sort of have that linkage there, you know, is, is very special to me personally. That's a great honor. And uh, I am, I'm sure that folks who come Friday morning will be uh, very happy to see somebody who will stand and read the order of the day that General Eisenhower gave on D-Day. Very I, cool. I, I hope so. And, and I, will, I will be out of this uniform and will actually be dressed in a period uh, uniform. So hopefully the weather cooperates too and it's a little a little cooler I, I, I think uh, in, in the wool the wool uniforms they, they tend to be a little bit uh, a little bit hot I, I they are a little hot but they'll stand the heat I can tell you that now the weather was a little iffy that day too it was it was indeed uh, they uh, they had spent a week bouncing around uh, waiting to cross the channel so uh, I, I, su I suppose a little rocky weather here would be appropriate I, I know it's, it's it's very interesting sort of the similarities with the weather you know mm -hmm. uh, that day as it, as it appears to be uh, this coming week. Tell us about your day job over at Fort Riley and and also what the Big Red One's going to be doing here on D-Day Plus 70. So I'm, I'm the Deputy Public Affairs Officer for the 1st Infantry Division, which is actually the nation's first uh, division uh, in the Army, uh, one of the oldest, most storied divisions. Uh, and we'll have representatives uh, in, in addition to myself that will be here uh, for the festivities here um, at the Eisenhower Museum uh, and Library. F during the Remembrance Ceremony, uh, we'll have a band, uh, we'll have a color guard. Uh, some of our general officers will actually take part in the wreath laying ceremony uh, mm -hmm. during, during that uh, larger Remembrance Ceremony. And then our band will also perform uh, a Sunset Symphony uh, the next night, Saturday evening. Uh, so everyone will be come out uh, and to hear them. Uh, and it's by donation, so everyone is invited certainly to, to come out and see them and to see us at the Remembrance Ceremony. It's so very cool for me, and I know as I look at other people's faces, they feel the same way to see the Big Red Ones band here. They are always are welcome, and, and folks so enjoy what they bring. But to have them with the Salina Symphony, that the Symphony at Sunset is going to be a special experience this year. Very, very I mean, very much so. And, and to have not only the first infantry division and the but the Eisenhower Museum you know in the state of Kansas yeah. here in everyone's right. backyard I mean it, that yeah. that that is something special and and you know I would I would encourage Kansans and non-Kansans alike to come out and visit those those sites it doesn't necessarily have to be on D-Day certainly we want to see everyone out there uh, during these various events uh, to commemorate the 70th anniversary but we are open the base is, is an open uh, installation so please come mm -hmm. visit us please come visit this wonderful facility that we're standing in right now. You being an active member of the military you certainly have a better perspective on this than I, but in corporate America, I look at when we work on planning and work on things that we think are big and, and we spend a lot of time and we think of how much work that was and we roll out a plan and we go execute it. Simply nothing compared to what was arranged to invade the mainland on D-Day. Uh, not even a portion of anything that's ever been done in corporate America would come close to that uh, adventure, if you will. 
I've heard it said it's a, the biggest organization, the biggest plan, the biggest operation that mankind's ever conducted. I mean, that, that many number of ships, that many number of personnel, that many number of equipment, not to mention just the meals. I, I think it was something like 60 million K rations or something like that, you know, to support the, the, all the troops in mm -hmm. sort of the early, early hours of that day. I mean, it's, it's staggering. Uh, certainly, I've never been a part, you know, and I've been to combat with the 1st Infantry Division uh, and with uh, some other divisions, but we've, we've never conducted any sort of operations on that scale. So even being a part of the Army, it's hard for me to, to really grasp the, the large nature of, of such an operation. You know, folks watching at home, uh, we're inviting them to come to D-Day Plus Very 70 at, and on Friday and Saturday, and it's be a tremendous event. You know, but as we talk about the D-Day invasion itself, that, that sounds a lot like war, and it was a lot like war because it was war. But World War II and, and Eisenhower and his leadership from general to president is where the world turned from purely war to war and reconstruction to create peace through prosperity. And what a, what a legacy Ike left us. Thank you for coming to talk to us today, and thanks for coming to represent General Eisenhower at the Remembrance Ceremony. I think it's going to be very cool. I think so, too. Thank you for having me. Major Marty O'Donnell, we'll see you, you Friday morning. Thank you. Come and see us. Thank you.